In the last video, we saw different pieces of an ML program. In this video, we're going to play with this concept in a playground. So bring your toys with yourself because it's both fun and learning. Hey soldier, let me say you something. Learning basics of deep learning takes ages. This journey is going to be long. What, sir? No, idiot, sir. You can learn it by playing, sir. You just have to watch the rest of the video, sir. Okay, fine. Let me go a little faster. I'm going backward. So let's start. So we assume we have four black boxes right now, which are somehow grey with the introduction last video. Warning. There are a lot of new technical words like sigmoid, relu, activation and so on. So here is my advice. Give up now and never try again. Just kidding. They may be new but they're fundamental and they're gonna repeat again and again in machine learning literature. So don't panic. You're doing something amazing. We're gonna use something called neural network, which we had a tiny intro, but for a basic understanding of what they are and the terminology around that, I recommend watching this amazing video by Three Blue One Brown, which use a lot of interactive animation to convey the concept better. So, for the rest of the video, I assume you have a basic understanding of terms like weight, bias, sigmoid, relu, activation, but. As a quick review, for being on the same page, I go through them quite rapidly. I suggest to pause the video and recall the concept as you hear them. However, if you feel master of it, feel free to jump to next section. The section and the time are down in the description. When you hear the term neuron, something like this must come to your mind. There are different types of neural network, but here we talk about vanilla or plain neural network. As you see, in this type of network, every neuron in the current layer has a connection with the neuron in the previous layer. And these arrows correspond to weights for a specific neuron. For example, each weight, like W1, shows how much important is the data in the previous layer for the neuron in the current layer and BIOS is added to this weighted sum to make neuron more expressive in terms of all the number of zeros and multiplying makes number dead or any other case in the mystery world of neural networks. And after that we can apply something we call activation function which can be relu, sigmoid or can age. The main goal of activation functions is adding nonlinearity to your model. If you don't use them, your model is just limited to one line for separating categories of data. But adding nonlinearity makes your model capable of using multiple lines to separate different categories of data separate from each other. If the definition of activation function sound a little vague to you, don't worry because I asked several great researchers in this field and even they are not sure exactly why the definition are exactly like that. You know, sometimes I say learning machine learning is like riding a bicycle. You don't have to know uh, how it works. You have to know how to use it. I want to introduce one of the lesser known products of Google, which is great. Playground.tensorflow.org And this playground you, as the name suggests, you play with these concepts until you get most of it. One of the super useful things about this playground is colors. Rely on colors. They will tell you their story about how weights are changing, how the model is learning, how data sets look like. Color starts from orange and goes to blue in a continuous range and white in between indicating zero. Because of this visualization, you can get what's going on as fast as possible. But before going into playground, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. 
as you hit the subscribe button here I have a noisy roommate which I'm going to politely ask him to be a little more quiet remember being polite is very important we have to pay attention to our behavior these days just a few seconds and I'm be here sorry Knock knock. I hope this is not road to come in. Hey buddy, how's it been? Hey buddy, what's up? Could you make it a little more quiet? Oh, I'm sorry if my body. I, I, I'm not. It will not happen again. Thank you. I'm sure you will not again. Okay, we're fine now. We can continue. Okay, where were we? So, here is the playground. The first part is the problem type. Classification or regression. is a type of problem in which we are limited to a set of predefined classes. In this case, we are limited to orange or blue. We can't say something is 1.2 blue. It, can't, it, it has to be orange or blue, not something between. But in regression, we are free to output any number, like estimating the price of a house. In real-world application, the number of categories can be much higher. But what is important about classification is that the output space is discrete. There are just four types of data set as you can see here you can click on them here and they will change here as you can see there are four just four types of them but they are different in complexity data set complexity almost affect everything in your program if a data set is as simple as this one here we can expect very low amount of error and a simple neural network could do a pretty good job but if your dataset consists of different and diverse and complex instances you should consider hardware gaining the same accuracy as before the next part is three buttons here reset train and step well the names are self-explanatory but the term epoch here refers to how many times the whole data set has gone through your model because like humans networks need repetition they can't get all the concepts but just a quick look next part is activation if you remember from the review the activation function is just applied to your famous sum and the results are called activations starting the main part then you can design your neural network so you can see the weights here and by hovering each of these lines you can see the associated line with this neuron and this one and you can also change them so the background color here tells you what neural network thinks about this space and these little dots represent the data set their color are not going to be changed but the background color is changing as the parameter gets updated you could see how learning parameter can change what neural network thinks about the environment so everything now seems quite complete but what about this features part at first glance it might seem a bit useless but it tells something crucial about machine learning. Your model is just as good as your data. So to show you some sort of proof, let's input the network with the second power of x and let's see what's happened. You could see it, it goes about 200 epochs, but nothing has been learned. This is because 
there is no kind of information in the power 2 of x. But if I input the network with the x1 itself, you could see in less than 30 epochs it learns the data completely. Just as a little proof of something I mentioned earlier, I want to show you if you use your activation a linear one, it means your model is nonlinear, you can you are just limited to one line. So let the model learn here. So everything seems perfect, but this different data set can help us. I change the data set and again let it learn. You see, nothing happens because if you change the data set to this one, you could see You know, the model is limited to just one line and has to choose the best line. So this line is not kind of perfect and it is kind of separating. It's just something in between. So um, it was just a little proof of something I said. So I'm going to ask you a question and please pay close attention to it and answer it even even if you have no idea what's the right answer is it shows me what exactly is your problem and it serves as a starting point for the next video let's say i i want to design my network if i add a couple of hidden layers like here and let the model train and also make it nonlinear and also note that I input y as the second input to the network and hit the play button you could see less than 45 epochs the model is a perfectly match for the data set but consider removing some of these layers and some of these neurons for example let's say I um, remove two of these neurons and just this layer completely and one neuron here and what's your prediction is mother able to learn the data set or not so let's see what's happened you see again less than 45 epochs and the model is perfectly matched so what's going here why the model ability to learn is not changing what's the reason behind that so thanks for watching this video please hit the button if you like it